Welcome back, my friends. In our last session, we dived into the fascinating world of creep and stress relaxation. Today, we're continuing our exploration with a crucial concept in dental materials, the rheological properties. In the last video, we discussed how materials can change shape over time. And today, we're delving into how they flow and deform under different conditions. What is rheology? Rheology is like the dance moves of materials. It's the study of how they flow or deform, and it applies to both solids and liquids. In dental materials, it's a blend of elasticity and viscoelasticity theory we talked about before. Let's break it down. Imagine trying to squeeze toothpaste from a tube. When you press gently, it flows easily. When you press harder, it takes more effort. This change in flow behavior is due to viscosity. Okay, so how do you think we would define viscosity? Viscosity is how we measure this flow. It's determined by the ratio of shear stress to the shear rate. Think of shear stress as the pressure on your toothpaste tube and shear rate as how fast the toothpaste comes out. That's viscosity. So when your toothpaste flows easily, it has low viscosity as it needs minimal pressure for a high flow rate. And when it's thicker, it has higher viscosity. You need more pressure for a slower flow. To dive deeper, we often use an equation, shear stress equals to K and N. K and N are constants. The N value determines the material's flow behavior. All right, now let's discuss Newtonian and pseudoplastic and dilatant fluids. When N is equal to 1, it's a Newtonian fluid. The stress is directly proportional to the rate. When N is less than 1, you have pseudoplastic behavior. It gets easier to flow as you push harder. When N is more than 1, it's dilatant. It gets thick under pressure. In dental materials, you'll often encounter Newtonian and pseudoplastic behavior. Dilatancy is rare. Understanding these behaviors is crucial for easy handling. Now, let's shift to working time and setting time. These concepts matter in dentistry because we often mix materials that go from liquid to solid. Working time is like the ticking clock during your dental procedure. It's the time a material remains manageable. When it becomes too thick, it's game over for manipulation. Then comes the setting time. We measure these times in various ways. One is by monitoring how viscosity changes with time using instruments like rheometers. But for the final solid state, we might use methods like resistance to penetration. Imagine a material resisting your dental instrument. It's like trying to push a stick into hardening clay. When it resists, it's set. You get the idea? In some cases, materials show Bingham characteristics. They need a specific initial stress to flow, but once it does, it may follow Newtonian or pseudoplastic behavior. And there you have it, a closer look at the rheological properties in dental materials, from toothpaste consistency to setting times. If you found this interactive and easy to understand, remember to like, share, and subscribe for Dental Wisdom. If you want me to go deeper into any of those uh, terminologies or topics, please let me know in the comments and we'll do that for sure. Until our next lecture, this is Dr. Sheikh signing off.